Welcome to Wealth Wisdom, the place you obtain insight and build wealth. If you are interested in this topic, please consider subscribe. The book we are going to share today is Happy Money by Ken Honda. There are two types of money, happy money and unhappy money, and the difference is energy. In Japan, it's not quite as weird as in the West for a stranger to ask to look through your wallet. But it's still a bit weird. When Ken Honda, the author, attended a party one day, this is what happened to him. A woman he'd only just met politely asked him for his wallet. So he handed it over. She went straight for the bills. This is a good one, she said, after examining the first bill. The second was good too, and the third. As she handed him his wallet back, she congratulated him. His money was all good. She'd been checking to see if it was smiling or not. Now, the author has written many books on money, he knows a thing or two about it. But this? This was new to him. Money can smile? And so, equally, money can frown? The mysterious woman explained to him, it depends how the money has been given and received. Hand over a bill in anger or out of guilt, and that's unhappy money. Joyously present it to a loved one, and it's happy money. In other words, money has energy. Money is energy. And immediately, the author understood. After all, he's dealt with a lot of people in his career, offering financial advice to rich and poor alike. And he knew, he's seen, that happiness isn't simply about the amount of money you have. He knew rich people living in fear of losing it all, or battling with a sense that their gains were ill-gotten, people with high-paying jobs they hated, for instance, or those who'd won a big divorce settlement. Of course, he also knew people struggling to pay their bills, who felt trapped in a very different sort of unhappy relationship with money. And he also knew some people, admittedly not as many, who had happy money. They loved their jobs, made time for their families, and often gave generously to good causes. Were they the richest people he knew? They were not. But they were, of course, the happiest. The good news is this, it's up to you. Because we're talking metaphorically here, maybe the mysterious party woman did possess some magical powers, maybe not, but the key thing is simply that whether money is good or bad is about attitude. It's you, the giver and receiver of your money, who infuses it with your energy. It's in your power to make your money happy. Everyone has the power to define their own relationship with money. What does money mean to you? Ask anyone you meet, and they'll all say something different. Some people say it's God, for some it's the devil. It's love, it's a slave driver, it's pieces of paper and metal, it's an abstract concept. But what money means to you will affect how you treat it. It'll affect how you play the game. Not everyone thinks of money as a game, but the most confident among us do. They're not playing to beat other people, though, their aim is to feel like a winner, on their own terms. In other words, they're getting what they want out of money. While everyone's different, there are six basic reasons why people want money, and it's important to know which one or ones you identify with. First off, people want money to survive, to put food on the table and a roof over their head. For some people, money is power. And for some, it's the way to right some perceived wrong, like bullying or experiences of shame in their youth. For others, money is about freedom, they equate financial security with independence. Money can also be about love and friendship, some people want money simply to impress people, and others want to use money to express how they feel about loved ones. Some of these motivations immediately seem problematic, it's obvious, for instance, that if you're only trying to get rich to impress people, you'll never be truly satisfied. But there are flaws in becoming too blinkered by any one of these motivating factors. If you're chasing freedom, for example, you'll always be frustrated. Money can help free you from certain obligations, sure, but feeling true freedom? That comes from within. And likewise, if you equate money only with basic survival, as you start to earn more you might find you assume every problem can be solved with cash. So try not to be too focused on any one motivation for money, and remember that money itself isn't happiness. It's a tool that we use, which can turn into other things that we want or need. Be zen about it, be calm and accepting, and in the moment. Rather than too little or too much, the best amount of money to have is as much as you need. And if your money is happy, you'll be grateful for what you have. And you'll show it, by saying thank you at every opportunity you get. Try it, it'll make you happy, and your money, and other people, too. 
Your money EQ is how you feel about money, and it's more important than your money IQ. When you think about money advice, what comes to mind? For most people, it's stuff like investing, interest rates, pension funds, tax, all that stuff. In other words, money advice usually means money IQ advice, facts, figures, and spreadsheets. And that's all fine. But what that means is, far too many people completely forget about money EQ, which stands for emotion quotient. If you want your money to be happy money, having a high money IQ isn't enough, your EQ is actually even more important. Because, as you've already heard, money isn't really about quantity. It's about how it makes you feel. What money EQ type are you? Some people are stockpilers, who hoard money out of fear of losing it. Compulsive moneymakers, meanwhile, are driven to earn as much as possible, to the point when they don't know when to stop. Hippies think of money as a cause of problems, and would rather it didn't play such a key role in society. And worriers will always find problems with their finances, regardless of how well they're really doing. Other types include spendthrifts, indifference, saver splurgers, and gamblers. There are negative emotions associated with all of these EQ types, money is a frequent source of anxiety, fear, doubt, and guilt. Which is why it's so important to understand your own money EQ, so you can recognize and curb your negative habits. And how can you do that? Regardless of what EQ type you are, here are some tips. First of all, let yourself receive money happily. When someone gives you money, whether it's your salary or a gift, be truly grateful for it, receive it with joy. If you receive money under a cloud, you'll never feel good about it, so learn to relish the process. A second point is to trust. This may feel almost impossible if you're in financial difficulty. But what you really have to trust is your own ability to solve your problems. If you doubt you can get yourself out of a tough situation, you'll increase the chances of that being true, so you should back yourself, and trust that you'll be rewarded for your own efforts. High confidence means good money EQ. And the last point? Share. People with happy money understand that everything depends on how money circulates, which means not hoarding it. Spend it on things you care about, and things that'll help others. Share other stuff too, gifts, expertise, happiness. Be a force for good. Developing a healthy money EQ may involve asking difficult questions about your past. It's easy to say things like trust and share, but it's hard to actually change your money EQ habits. How you feel about money is wired into you from a young age, even from early childhood. One of the author's clients was a wealthy 70-year-old man who opened up about his early years. The man remembered that his mother had so little money, she struggled even to buy food, and couldn't afford a birthday present for him either. He broke down in tears, as if he was a child once again. That memory of money trouble had stayed with him his whole life, and explained his urge to keep on earning even now aged 70. He was still so afraid he might lose everything, he still remembered how it felt to have nothing. When people struggle with money issues, so often they're trying to right the wrongs of the past. And if you have children, you probably do the same with them, it's normal to want your children to grow up without the same financial hang-ups that you have yourself. But remember, the same was true for your parents as well. If you want to truly understand your own relationship with money, it's often useful to look all the way back to your grandparents. They're the ones, after all, who influenced your parents. The author, for instance, had always thought his grandfather was simply a successful businessman, but one day, he discovered he was reckless with his money, the gambler type. His grandfather had a habit of taking bigger and bigger risks, buying whole ships full of merchandise to turn around for a profit. That, in turn, led to the author's father being very careful with his money, so he looked like a more respectable, reliable sort of businessman. Which was why the author was brought up the way he was. You're probably wondering what the point of all this is. 
Sure, it's interesting to think about how you developed your money habits, but how does that help you turn your unhappy money into happy money? Simply put, reflecting on your past is a way to stop playing the blame game. If you're feeling bad about money, the point isn't to blame your parents. Rather, it's to think about what it was like for them too, they likely had good reasons for acting how they did, after all. In other words, just like the money we circulate, we're all part of a chain. Accept it, appreciate it. Or, if it's doing harm, change it, and do something different. It's up to you whether you infuse your money with positive or negative energy. Here's a simple exercise for you, go to the mall. Just take a seat somewhere and watch. You'll start to feel the money flowing all around you, who is buying stuff? How do they feel? What's the energy like? Let's go back to that question from earlier. What is money? One simple answer would be, currency. Think about that word for a moment, because it reveals a deeper truth. It's a sort of current, flowing between people, coursing through society. Unlike an electrical current, though, with money you are in control of what type of current you infuse it with. Some people, the author calls them money magnets, are simply hell-bent on gaining as much money as possible. They don't care if it's happy money or unhappy money, they just want lots of it. And honestly, those people probably really will end up with huge piles of cash in the bank. The opposite is true too, if you hate money, you'll probably find that it doesn't come to you easily, maybe you even repel it. Now, of course, you're not always in full control of your money flow. Sometimes, you'll find more money flowing out than in, while at other times it'll be the opposite. What you can always control is your attitude. When plenty is coming in, do two things, firstly take the time to appreciate it. Be excited at your good fortune, and say thank you. But secondly, remember to invest in yourself. There will probably be leaner times ahead too, so do some sensible planning and keep some money aside. When little is coming in and you're in difficulty, it's really tough to keep a cool head. The best thing you can do is remember that it's a temporary situation. Trust yourself to figure out how to make things better. Be grateful for the things you do have. And work out what's going to make you not just prosperous, but happy. Ultimately, you're the one who controls whether the money you have and spend is happy or unhappy. And it's unbelievable how much better you'll feel if you make your money happy. So here are some parting tips. Be generous, give money and gifts to charity and friends, and give more than you need, even when you pay a bill, if you're happy with it. Be grateful, celebrate when you receive money, and make sure the shop owner knows how happy your purchase has made you. And say thank you, a lot. Challenge yourself to say it at every chance you get. You'll be amazed as the energy of your money changes course. You'll start to see happy money all around you. That's the end of today's sharing. If you like our content, please give us a thumb up and share it with your friends. See you next time.